that's, yes, that's, I'm, here, I'm, I'm here to talk about what you asked me about. So. Hey everybody, Don Farrell with Actors Theatre of Indiana. Thank you so much for joining us and spending a little bit of your lunch break with Actors Theatre uh, for Lunch Break with ATI. And today, uh, I am well, I'm great, so glad to be back here uh, with the podcast. Uh, good old Cindy Collins, my colleague, has been doing a great job, as has our executive director, Jim Riley, filling in also. I mean, we all do it together, but it's great for me to be back here too. I was a little bit busy, but I am thrilled to be able to share the time with your lunch break with our dear friend, Kevin Ryder here, a city councilman uh, extraordinaire for so many, what is it, 13 years 15 now? 15 years. 15 years just, now? I'm just starting my 16. Holy moly. Talk about somebody who has helped shape our community in such a positive way. Uh, we are so grateful for all of the constituents, of course. I mean, it's the city of Carmel, right? It's all of us together, and all of us together help uh, make a better quality of life for each other. And with such leadership and vision as the city council, the mayor, all of the other leaders, city leaders that have been involved in the city planning, there's so much that goes involved. But I wanna take a moment right now to just thank you for everything that you have done also in, in helping shape this amazing city and community that we at ATI are just thrilled to just play a small part in, in the, the success of such a great community. I love to do it. Um, it's been a great 15 years. 12 of those I've spent on planning commission also, yeah. which I think is a lot of fun. When I'm done with this whole political thing at the end of my career, I'm gonna ask whoever the mayor is to put me back on the planning commission. That was so much fun. I huh? really enjoy it. Really? Um, but it's, you know, it's, somebody asked me the other day, is, is being an elected official stressful? And I said, no, because I love it. You know, th there's an old saying, if you love what you do, it's not work. Mm -hmm. True. I'm the same way about the restaurant business. I've been in customer service for 38 years. Um, city council is just another form of customer service, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy it. Well, you guys do a great job. I mean, uh, between you and Rochelle, I mean, okay, I got a question for you. Yes. You guys, they got two great restaurants. Divi, oh, so good, so good. And then, of course, uh, at, at the library, which was, a, that was an old... Uh, old Andrew Carnegie Library. Yeah, the Carnegie. We, we're in our 25th year now. And it's great. If you go in there, it's such a great throwback to yesteryear. The food is delicious uh, and upstairs and downstairs at Woody's. Um, so when you guys put together, does she come up with the menu? Do you come? Do you guys work together? <laughs> we, How we does work, that all work? We work together, but she's more of the culinary creativity. Um, I'm more front house and running the business. Yeah. Um, we collaborate. When we travel, we, whenever we go to a city, we look up the best five to ten restaurants and we eat at all of them. What so, a fun, like, it's like a great, it's, yeah. it's a work, uh, it's a, it's part of the job. You're doing your research. But boy, what a fun part of the job, huh? We enjoy it. <laughs> uh, we, we travel around history and food, so. Yeah. Yeah, you've done a good bit of traveling. I've been following you on, I'm even going over to uh, the ancient lands over there. Oh, Israel was amazing. Yeah. Um, that That's the trip of my life. Um, of all the places, because you travel a good bit, right? We, like to, we like to get around. We do short trips. Short trips. Like, what's a short trip for you? Uh, three to five days. Three to five days. Yeah. Okay. And of all of the places that you guys have traveled, what do you, do you have a favorite? My favorite trip was Israel. It was. Um, but if but if you do if you pick food, um, it's hard to beat Chicago for food. Uh, um, but I will tell you. So you go people. Chicago pizza rather than New York pizza, huh? No, are you I, like no that? I'm more of a New York pizza. Are you? A New, are you? Yeah. I like a thinner. Do you like pizza. folding the pizza I slice? Do. I'm a thinner crust pizza. Yes, yes, yes. But, That's but I, my. But I will tell you that the the gym right behind Chicago is Louisville. It's thirty percent less cost. Uh -huh. You can uh -huh. drive your car and park, and the food is spectacular. Really? And it it it's right behind them. Um, really, I need to take a trip down. I mean, I pass by. I, I live, I grew up in Georgia, mm -hmm. so I always drive down sixty five on my way down to Nashville, and then switch over twenty four, and then seventy five. So I always go through, but I never stop by. I never Nashville. stop. So I need to stop. Another good one. Na oh, now I do love Nashville. There's a cool. There's a place called Bastion. It's in a warehouse, uh -huh. and we because we always search for the cool, fun things, and you bought tickets, so they know exactly how many people are coming, what they're they cooking, can plan already. It's ahead. fifteen courses. I yeah. mean, it's spectacular. That so, is that is awesome. That's um, how we get inspired. Well, tell, so, and you you've been doing this a good bit, even so at the young age of twenty one. I started. You pizza started place. Parcel Pizza here in Carmel, and you expanded it to five locations. You started at twenty one. It, it was it was right right 
Well, I was closing in on 22, but yes. Wow. So had your family, when you were growing up, had it always been no food. a part? Of, no? No food. So what got you got into the I was business? writing a paper on how to get a business loan, and I took it to banks to get it graded, and a bank gave me $20,000. So I went to the manager at Domino's and it was his idea. And I said, hey, you want to do this? And a local real a local real estate developer, Bill Armstrong, rented me space at 126 in Rangeland. I built it out. 30 days later, we were open and I got in the restaurant business. I was planning on being an accountant like everybody else in my family. It, oh, really? And I've been in the food business ever since. Wow. Well, I'm sure the accountant side has helped. It has the not business. Hurt. It does help in running the business. Like running, yes. knowing how yes. to run. And you also went to IU Bloomington. Correct. My daughter is looking to go to IU. She was accepted at IU Bloomington. She can't, wants to be a Hoosier down there. Can't beat it. So, uh, and I so, still go down to football games and basketball. Do you? Games, so. Yeah. Yeah, we love we love IU. We love all of the schools here. Yes. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that's one of the great things about Indiana. Sure, for all Indiana schools, they're amazing schools. Yes, we've got so many things to, that we're blessed with, and uh, Carmel definitely being one of them. Um, but yeah, all of the schools here. Butler is a great school. But, uh, uh, Purdue is a great school, and uh, Ball State is. I mean, there's just so every everywhere you turn. It's well, great my, education. My IU fan friends get mad at me because I have good basketball tickets mm -hmm. and I always take a buddy of mine who's a Purdue fan mm -hmm. ah. and he and I have gone to the game together for probably the last eight years. Now you also went to Cathedral, right? I did. So why did you not go up to Notre Dame being a good old going to <laughs> Cathedral grad? I mean the push from the Catholic side going to Notre my, Dame, my right? My family bleeds cream, cream and crimson. Oh, they do. My yeah. dad was involved in the first little five. I mean we we, you know, my, my grandfather was in the Sigma Nu house with Herman Wells. And oh we, my God! We go, we go way back at IU. It was uh, okay. It, the only, the only person that didn't do the IU um, was my brother. He wanted to be an engineer, so we forgave him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Purdue is a great engineering school. It is a great. School. We couldn't argue that. One, yeah, so. yeah, that's true. That's true. So, um, I want to thank also, uh, you know, City of uh, Carmel has been so generous to Actors Theater of Indiana as well as many other arts organizations and all or a lot of businesses and organizations uh, in in the area. Um, but we are always supportive. Uh, we're all appreciative of the support, uh, not only from a just logistics standpoint, but also from a financial standpoint. And um, every year, we're very, very grateful. We work homegrown. Very to, we well, like, yeah, we like homegrown. We yes, homegrown is it's it. That's the thing about uh, everybody knows each other and all sees the growth over time. Mm -hmm. You know, stay the test of time and and put in the hard work. And it's a partnership. It is. That's the way we look at it. Yeah. So thank you very much for your continued support from the city of Carmel. Thank you for your continued support of Actors Theater of Indiana and on behalf of all of the arts organizations as well. Um, I also, and I know this is with Actors Theater of Indiana, but I also sit on the board in full disclosure of the Carmel International Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, had a great big festival this past year, oh. which is great. We're also as on taking off that hat and putting on the, the hat of uh, the Carmel International Arts Festival, Thank you so much for your support also of that organization. Uh, and Actors Theater of Indiana is thrilled to be one of the members of, for many years in the past, uh, we've always been involved and we're, we're looking forward to continuing that partnership with them as well. Well, the, all those different things that you're talking about are the, part of the reason Carmel's what it is. Um, you know, it takes all of the different facets, the arts, the food, mm -hmm. the, the businesses, um, small entrepreneurs, the big businesses. I mean, we all work together. Yeah, that's why Carmel's what it is. It does, and and that's one of the one of the reasons why when we were looking, uh, myself and my two colleagues, co-founders of the theater company, we were trying to decide. We knew we wanted to have this uh, this dream of starting, you know, taking taking control in an industry that you have no control many times, <laughs> and trying to make things happen. And uh, when we were looking and finally met with Mayor Brainerd and he shared about the vision of City of Carmel and what was going on with all of this, uh, we don't think this is exactly where we want to be because many years, living in New York City for 14 years, we've been blessed to be able to work all, really all over the world. So you get to see things that have worked, things that haven't worked, things that, oh, that's a great idea if they would do a little bit of this. And so seeing the vision that was already here for Carmel and how the community rallies behind that there's some there's such there's such a civic pride also about carmel which is great and um we just knew that this was the place to be you know a thing that's not known in my past at cathedral i did all the plays and musicals 
No. I was the first football player. To, I was in West Side Story. It was my first musical. Oh, can I give you? Oh, and, what a guy. Look and, at that, huh? Our, How about that? Our sophomore year, Crucible won the state. Great play. We put it on at Connersville, and we ended up winning state with that. So, The Crucible. It's that's, a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's good camaraderie. Yeah. Um, you, you learn things, and you get to really get to know people. And it takes, you know, yeah, that's one of the things I mentioned uh, when we have our openings and we talk amongst, we have our opening night party and, and we'll usually do, a, we always do a traditional champagne toast. And it's tradition. It's always great to be on stage and take the bow and get the accolades, but it's so much more than the people who are on the stage. It's all of the, it's all of us. And it goes back to that. It's everybody working together as a team. There is, it's just like a great football team or in the military you are only as strong as your weakest link and it's just the same thing about everybody in every aspect of making things happen for a, a production whether play or music to play along with that when i was building parcel pizza i was i had a roommate we both looked at the house at the same time she was coming from canada she mm -hmm. was going to be the lead dancer in the annapolis ballet theater so we rented this house together and they needed help putting on um christmas uh, nutcracker, nutcracker. nutcracker. Okay. Uh -huh. And they said, I said, well, I've got some experience. You know, I helped with the back stuff too. So I ran the sound for them and I started and hit play. Somebody rewound. It was still reel to reel. Oh. And they rewound it backwards. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we, we had to stop, <laughs> panic, <laughs> rewind it. Was all. it kind of like reel? Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> We, we rewound it, flipped it around, and started it, and everything went fine the rest of the night. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, those moments are... So I've been on the crew side, too. <laughs> I have a good friend of mine. I went to the Cincinnati Conservatory. Uh, shout out to the Bearcats. And a um, good friend of mine who was doing sound for us for the summer professional theater, he would have this, you know, those, of course, the boards have gotten smaller as technology has gotten better, but this big board and patrons who would always walk into the house of the theater and stuff, and they always come up to the sound guy and say, I'm so sorry, can you do something about the air conditioning? And he goes, oh, yeah, absolutely, ma'am. And he had a fader that did not have anything about it, but he had AC or heat on it, and he would just move that fader up or down. A little secret. Right. And they were like, an intermission, he talked to them, like, how, do you feel much? Oh, it's so much better. It's so much better. Thank you so much. Yeah. Perception is reality. <laughs> it is. That's our little secret. Yeah. Don't give it yeah. away, okay? No. This is, oh, we're just a safe yes. amongst us, right? Nobody else. Yeah, John Laster's going to hate me for giving away his secret there. Um, so you made a big announcement about running for mayor. I am. Uh, mayor Brainerd has done an amazing job. Hats off to him on all of the many, many years of success and gui guidance and leadership. And now he has decided to step down and, and retire and enjoy retirement and whatever he's got planned after that. And you decided to throw your hat in the ring for mayor. I did. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I went to him three years ago. Yeah. When I hired my team and I said, I said, Mr. Mayor, I've hired a team to run for mayor in 23. <laughs> and I said, what if I want to run? I said, <laughs> I said, well, you and I have been talking about this a long time. I said, I, I want you to walk out the door. I don't want to kick you out the door. So I didn't push anything, uh -huh. um, I, but I was preparing yeah. to be ready. And he made the decision on his own. Yeah. We had a lot of conversations. And, you know, I think he's the most relaxed I've seen him in 15 years. I bet, I bet and, so. And he's earned it. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's going to have a controlled exit. He's going to have somebody that follows him up that has been part of what he's done, mm -hmm. um, shares his vision. Um, we, we have different roles. Like I call him the innovator. You know, he's a creator. He created what we have, and we have an amazing city. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to keep that innovation going. I'll continue, hopefully, have him in my ear. But I'm also, I'm an operator. I've been running my own businesses for 38 years. And I intend to put in place, you know, good solid operations that will keep us going for the next 30 years. What do you see as the biggest challenge that, I mean, Carmel has got so many great things going on and I'm not, not ever, everybody always wants to look at like, okay, but no, I mean, just like what, how, what would your envision be? Well, as I always say a restaurant that isn't changing is dying. Mm -hmm. I think a city is the same way. Mm -hmm. You constantly have to, you have to pay attention to what's going on in the world. And the mayor's done that. He stayed ahead. You know, on our infrastructure, we don't catch up infrastructure. We always stay ahead in infrastructure. And um, we're going to keep doing things like that. But one of the biggest things, people fear what they don't know. That I is say so this, true. I say this on planning commission with developments and neighborhoods and stuff all the time. So I intend to, you know, our finances, people need to know it. If you want information from me, you're going to get it. 
Mm -hmm. um, I intend to go out and in detail explain all of our finances to people. Because once people have the facts and they know exactly what's going on, mm -hmm. it's less fearful. How do, how does in a society like today, because we have, we're inundated by news or uh, spin and whatever, how does, how does one be able to get across what the true facts are? Because then there's like, how, who, that, I think that's the biggest thing that people these days, and I'm not talking about Carmel, I'm talking about just in a general world sense, really. Where do you find the, to be able to really hang your hat on something? You gotta be personal. I got a phone call from a business yesterday and a half hour later I had it fixed and had an answer for them. Mm -hmm. You gotta do it personally. Mm -hmm. um, you, Cause one of the biggest problems in development in Carmel is ideas get out on the internet before the facts get to the community. It's one of the reasons 14 years ago, I think was my first year on plan commission. An item came before us and I said, have you met with the neighbors? And they said, no. And I looked at the chair of the committee and I said, can we table this? And he's like, what do you mean? I said, we need to meet with the neighbors. Mm -hmm. So ever since then, developers call me before a project would come in and we would set up a neighborhood meeting and, mm -hmm. and, and start to talk to the neighbors. You need to get buy-in. You don't, They don't have to agree. Right. I always say a successful negotiation is when both parties leave a little bit unhappy. Sure, You've sure. accomplish something. In Absolutely. Situation. One of the things I love about the city of Carmel uh, and I think it's a Hoosier spirit, too. I'm a transplant here, right? So I was born in North Carolina, Tar Heel country, and then raised from first grade on in Georgia. Uh, so I'm trying and then lived in New York City for 14 years. But um, one of the things I love about is, is the nature of the Hoosier spirit here. There's a lot of pride. There's a lot of uh, what's the just they're, they're friendly. Everybody's really friendly. And there's, it doesn't seem like there's any ulterior motive about it. Sometimes they say about Southerners, and I can say this because I'm a Southerner, they're like, they're just so nice, but then you don't really know if they're really genuine with the niceness, right? I really think that, that that's a beautiful thing about Indiana is the people here are truly genuinely nice and genuinely care about each other. And I think that, um, you know, we're all, basically, we all want the same things. It's all how we go about getting to those things right. is usually where we find our, our differences. My dad, when he passed away, I, I, my mom was like, he passed two years ago, and, and my mom was like, well, you got to think, you boys need to think about what you want. And I just wanted one thing, which is now above my desk, it was above his. And it's a sign that just says, I'm not interested in how the job, double underlined, can't be done. Right. And that's a beautiful thing about this community is... There's always a way to figure it out. Right. We just got to work together to figure it out. And we all benefit from it. A lot of times I say, if you're going to complain, bring me a solution. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, I, and it's big That's on good. voting. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm always disappointed at the lower turnouts that we have, especially in off-year elections. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important to vote mm -hmm. for people to get out and vote. Um, you know, I, I told my little sister one time when she didn't vote, she was complaining about something. I asked her, I said, did you vote? She goes, no. I said, well, then you can't complain. <laughs> you got to be involved. That, that's the greatest thing we have in this country. You have a say in everything that can happen. It's like the lottery. You don't win unless you play. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, what, uh, so, oh, I had a question. and that, I'm getting old. That's I right. think I'm just getting old. Where no, the we're, question's we're, there, and then it just kind of flies out of your head. We don't get old. We're just like fine wine. We just Is that getting better? Get better. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Um, oh, yeah, that's what it was. So talking about communication is so important. I, 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 I saw on your your website you talked about you know having patrons, uh, community members uh, reach out to you to let's start start a conversation. What are your What are you interested? What do you find a certain top three or whatever items that you find that people that have been reaching out saying, I want to talk about this, that, that res it seems to be really resonating strongly with the majority of people who reach out to you about this community. The biggest thing is people want to understand our finances. Oh, that is. Yeah. Okay. They, they, want to, they want to know about our debt and they want to understand our finances. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make that happen. Great. Um, uh, Jeff Worrell did a great video um, about three years ago before the last election. Mm -hmm. And we're going to expand on that. Um, there's just... The more information you give people, the better. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, you know, like in my restaurants, I always say I have a polling place every day because people come and talk to me. Um, the, the three things that come up are development, debt, and then knowing me, they always, they bring up faith. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I always like to talk about my faith too, so that's good. All right. Well, that's another great thing about this community too, the strong, strong faith of a variety of different faiths. That's one of the things I loved about New York City is being We're a all melting welcome. pot. Yeah. Everything, so everything's welcome in Carmel. Yeah, um, we, I love that. I'll tell you, I went to, you know, there was some controversy when the mosque came through and I went to their groundbreaking a few months ago and it might have been the most welcome I've been in 15 years. Is that right? It was a marvelous event. Mm. And I then a week later went to a Friday prayer at the Moscow River Fishers because the people from the Carmel went asked me to mm -hmm. go over and experience it. And unbelievably welcoming group of people. Um, so we have it. We have everything's welcome here. Yeah. And, and, and it shows with where the city and uh, it's the community support, not only just like... Um, not only the Veterans Day ceremony, but also the Holocaust uh, remembrance ceremony. Or uh, there's so many different ways in which the city uh, is able to reach out. So Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. Martin, Martin Luther King just They talked about good neighbor. I mean, mm -hmm. a man that constantly preached about being a good neighbor. He represented everybody. Yeah. Not one group of people, not one, you know, corner. He. He represented everybody, and he believed in bringing everybody together, and we're all created equal. Yeah, um, I think that ex is exemplified in karma. I think it is too. Well, you got anything else you want to share? Because this has been great. I could I could talk forever, I'm, but I know you're busy. This I, we tried to get this guy on earlier in the summer, and he was busy, busy, busy. Well, so we're you, thrilled I, to have him today. I have a management team at both restaurants, <laughs> and I have been phasing myself out <laughs> to get ready for a new job. All so. right. Well, uh, wish you best of luck, and uh, thanks so much for spending time with us and with you. Uh, for you spending your time with Lunch Break with ATI, we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 12 noon for another installment of ATI Lunch Break with ATI. Have a great... Uh, oh, oh, real quick, real quick. Uh, I, I forgot. I can't believe it. we just announced this. This is amazing, guys. Real quick, uh, in in February, we've got three different things that are going on sale uh, tomorrow, Thursday at 10 a.m. We've got a show called ATI's Greatest Hits. It's going to be packed with all of these great performers who have been with us over the past 18 years in doing their song from whatever show it was that they did and tell a story about a past ATI show. This is going to be at the Studio Theater on February 4th. All of these are at the Studio Theater at the Center for the Performing Arts, by the way. So you'll see numbers from a year with Frog and Toad. How many Frog and Toad fans do we have out there? Come on. Yeah, Chicago, uh, Forbidden Broadway, Sweeney Todd, Million Dollar Quartet. We've got Million Dollar Quartet coming up for two performances at the Palladium in June. Uh, then the next weekend, uh, on February 11th, John Mobley. This guy is amazing. I was at a fundraiser uh, for uh, Dotted Line Divas, and he, he was the magician there. <clears throat> Got to meet John. He's been on a uh, Penn and Teller uh, show in Las Vegas. He's national, amazing magician. You'll be astounded by it. You want to check that out? That's going to be Saturday at 2 p.m. at uh, February 11th in the Studio Theater. And then some Yahoo is going to be singing about Barry Manilow. And that's going to be, I'm going to be doing my Barry Manilow show with Terry Woods and the Terry Woods Orchestra in the Studio Theater. That's going to be Saturday night, February 18th at the Studio Theater. And uh, it's gonna be just a, so much fun. We've got that, we've got a world premiere of Mr. Confidential, our first world premiere. We're gonna have the eyes of the nation on Carmel when we're putting this show out for the first time. Amazing music, amazing stories based on real life people, true things that happened between 1952 and 1958, the Confidential magazine. And then of course we're bringing back Million Dollar Quartet for two performances in June at the gorgeous Palladium. We can't wait to, you've seen it two times before in the studio theater, just like what we did with Sweeney Todd in the studio. It's gonna take on an entirely exciting new life in the Palladium. So you wanna check that out and all tickets you can purchase at 317-843-3800 or go to atistage.org and see more of that. Other than that, enough of the plugs. Thanks so Damn. much. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kevin. I'll see you next week. Take care. Have a great week.